Hey guys, Ranger Georgie here with U.S. Fish and Wildlife from Laguna Cascosa National Wildlife Refuge in partnership with the city of Brownsville. This week, as promised, we're having a Q&A with Sarge Vasquez. Um, I'm hoping it's okay if I call you by your nickname right now, Sarge. Um, everybody knows you as that. He's also known as Sergio Vasquez. He is the Laguna Cascosa National Wildlife Refuge Assistant Refuge Manager, as well as the Hunt Coordinator. We're also here with Raul Maroboto, City of Brownsville Athletic Supervisor. So uh, let's get jumping into this. Sarge, if you don't mind, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? I grew up here in the Valley. Um, I'm glad to be back in the Valley. Glad to be working on Laguna Toscosa. That's my home refuge. Um, so it's just been a dream come true to come back home and uh, work with the resources uh, that I'm the most familiar with, which are, uh, you know, the, the ecosystem and the, uh, the flora and the fauna of, of Laguna Toscosa. Definitely outstanding. That's awesome. So we know now that uh, obviously you're the hunt coordinator at, at Laguna Toscosa. And for myself, we uh, spoke earlier in the intro for this hunting week is I'm, I'm only used to or the only hunting type of hunting that I've done is um, a waterfowl and, and bird, you know, so for like white winged dove hunting and stuff like that. So I'm really interested in this particular week. And one of the questions that we wanted to ask is um, what hunting opportunities are offered at Laguna? Well, at, at Laguna Dos Cosa, we can uh, hunt whitetail. Um, there's also some exotics like uh, nail guy antelope and feral hogs that uh, that we allow hunting for there on, on Laguna Dos Cosa and uh, also upcoming Bahia Grande. What, uh, what's your favorite animal to hunt there at Laguna, if you have a preference? Um, it's going to be whitetail deer. Um, I always grew up uh, living in close proximity to uh, the infamous King Ranch. And for a lot of the locals uh, down in South Texas, Laguna Toscosa was our, our king ranch. Um, the quality of the whitetail that are there, the quality of the habitat that, that, uh, that's on Laguna uh, produces some, some beautiful whitetail. And uh, that's where I, uh, I guess, cut my teeth, so to say, on archery hunting. Yeah, so then, and I mean, there's obviously a, a couple of different species that are available to be hunted out there. Um, we went out on a hike uh, earlier this summer also and actually got a snapshot on video that we ended up putting on a nature hike of an alligator in the water right off of there. Um, I know there's been shows on, on cable, National Geographic, stuff like that, where they do like swamp people. Those guys are out there in the bayou in Louisiana uh, getting alligator hunts in and tags. And I know they there's mentions on the show when, I, when I've watched of Texas. Is there – any truth to that down here? Is there alligator hunt opportunities? Actually, there is. We've uh, actually submitted a, a work uh, to, to start doing alligator hunts on Laguna Tascosa. Uh, at the moment right now, uh, for this current year, uh, we're getting in line with the state and permitting. Um, but the actual hunt looks like it will be a, a, a approved for the 21-22 uh, hunt season. So we're excited about that. It's something new down down this far south, uh, where uh, where we can have offer public land hunting for for alligators. Yeah, that's awesome. What uh, what method of harvest would would, would that be? We, we, we would we would be in line with the state. So mm -hmm. I believe the state regulations are uh, they must be uh, uh, hooked or or uh, or caught first before you can dispatch the alligator, and that's just so um, we don't lose they don't lose their kill, lose their mm -hmm. harvest. Definitely. Good deal. Um, so archery here in South Texas is challenging, so challenging just because of the thick brush. Would you say it's easier at Laguna than it would be at uh, any South Texas lease? I wouldn't use the, the term easy at all with hunting at Laguna. And I think <laughs> that's, that's the beauty of hunting at Laguna. Um, that's why people return to Laguna is that um, it's almost a feather in the cap to, to say that you've harvested harvested a whitetail or even uh, a nil guy or feral pigs at Laguna. It is, it is raw hunting uh, down to its core. There's no, there's no feeders you can use. Uh, you can't build blinds. Uh, so you, you, you kind of depend on your knowledge, the wind and your equipment so you can succeed at Laguna. Um, that, that challenge, if, if you're the type of hunter that likes a challenge, um, then you're going to love this hunt. Oh yeah, definitely. So you uh, mentioned uh, a little bit about um, the Bahia unit, and I know uh -huh. that it's expanding, right? And there's going to be opportunities for hunting out there. So how is that going to work? Is that going to still be a draw hunt, or how do you how would you gain gain access to that land? 
actually the uh, the lottery through Texas Parks and Wildlife for uh, our uh, refuge lands of Bahia Grande is on there as of uh, as of this month. So get out there, apply, and and try to get those hunts in. Off the top of my head, I can't tell you exactly how many permits. I want to say it's between 300 permits. I believe it's 300 permits this year. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, and it's only for exotic uh, species, which would be your nail guy antelope and your feral hogs out there. But um, the probability is going to be great. I mean, we got it. There, there's a, a very healthy nail guy population on Bahia Grande, and there I have seen some true trophy uh, blue bulls out there. So um, I'm excited for the hunters to get out there and, and uh, be able to harvest. Uh, I guess an animal of a lifetime. Oh yeah, there's always that one real nice one there off of Redgate, the real friendly one. Yeah. It doesn't remind anyone to get real cold. <laughs> yeah. It's an easy trophy. <laughs> yeah. So, as a rookie hunter, is there any tips you would like to give uh, anybody who 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 it's their first time doing one of the draw hunts there at Laguna? I think the first thing that people don't realize um, when they come to Laguna. And I say this uh, in a way where it's, it's one of the hardest hunts that, that people will ever be on. And I think because not, not, not so much is it physically challenging. It is if you decide to walk in five miles, what you pack in, you've got to pack out. And then and if you harvest something, then you're looking at a two, three mile, if you want to go that far in hunt. But it's also the mental aspect. Um, you know, this is a draw hunt and there's no just set space that belongs to you. It belongs to everybody. And um, I think when you're out there hunting, most hunters like it quiet, no noise. They want to be by themselves. And all of a sudden, here comes another hunter walking by that has no idea. I mean, you're camoed up. You, you don't want to be seen. So somebody walks right by you. And then, I mean, you really can't be upset that, that you know, they're disturbing your hunt because it's public land. And mm-hmm. that's part of the challenge, part of the mental, mental aspect of that, not to let that distract you. Because, I mean, we're already national refuge and there are people usually hiking and biking on the refuge. So animals are aware of that. So oh, yeah. like challenging physically um, in the mornings, depending on the day, it could be, you know, in the high thirties and then by the afternoon, it may be 80 degrees. And so, like I said, you've got to be prepared, drink water and do all those things that you, you know, you've got to be aware of. So that, that's, that's the challenging aspect of Laguna. Yeah. yeah all, all good tips. All good tips. So out of all the, the refuges, um, is there any units that are better for harvesting deer, hog, or neil guy? I mean, is, for each of them, is there one that's better than any other? Definitely. I mean, you, I, would, I, would, uh, I would prioritize one unit over another because what, what draws me to a certain unit might not draw another hunter. But you also know your species, do some homework, and know what type of habitat they like. And you can see that habitat on an aerial map, get on Google Earth and you can see, you know, your white tail might hang out in your thicker brush where your neil guy might hang out in your more open uh, savanna area. So, uh, or, or prairie, you know, coastal prairie. So you can kind of pick and choose and find your pockets, find your bottlenecks uh, using uh, Google Earth and, and hopefully get set up on what you hope is a good trail. And, you know, you got to use your, your, your knowledge and your, your, uh, your instinct but uh, mm-hmm. find a fresh trail instead of uh, an old trail. Good deal. Um, what, uh, what was the deciding factor for opening up Bahia Grande unit to hunting? I feel like it's been in the works for quite, quite some time. And now that it finally is up to opening uh, for hunting, what, what was one of the deciding factors? I think uh, the, 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 the public deserves to have access to public lands. And one of the, uh, our, our, you know, one of the presidential um, uh, initiatives this year or the, the, since uh, the, this administration has been in is opening those public lands to, um, to hunting, you know, uh, hunting and fishing. And we have a, a pretty big land unit that uh, the public wants access to. And we finally got the work done to, uh, to have the ability to open up that unit and uh, glad to offer it to the public to come out and hunt. Yeah, it's a good thing. It's, it's, it's amazing. I can't wait. It's going to be fun. So given all the acreage that, that Laguna um, encompasses, um, how healthy is the population of, of harvestable animals there? Well, we do. We do. Uh, we, we try to. With COVID going on, it was hard to end up doing our spring spotlight survey. I don't know how we're going to be able to do our, our, our fall spotlight survey. But, you know, um, 
in the in the past we've kind of had you know kind of a, a pretty sustainable population of uh, of whitetail um and we kind of use those same methods to uh get a, a population estimate of, of nilgai as well and we kind of want to make sure we don't fall below a certain threshold um but as long as we're kind of in that in that good area for whitetail you know we'll keep offering those hunts at the at the degree that we do so i i, I know that you've already hunted laguna do you have any favorite memory of, of you hunting there? I will tell you that there was this uh, one uh, one story, and I, and I don't know if it was a favorite memory, but it's my one of my most uh, memorable memorable memories. I was with uh, with uh, my best friend uh, Mike Salas and uh, his brother in law, and we kind of teamed up together to to hunt this edge, uh, as you will, and we kind of got all set up and. I got my rattling horns out and I started rattling. And when I looked up this just beautiful 10 point, he was probably in the 150 inch range, just a, a really good looking deer was coming right in, right into me. And I, I just remember looking over and about 120, 130 yards to, to the, to the, to the east of me was, uh, was my best friend, Mike and his tripod. And then another hundred and something yards was, was Marcelo. And they were all watching this deer walk right into me. And all of a sudden, my phone rang and the deer looked up and they didn't realize my phone rang and the deer looked up, look, you know, blue and then turned around and ran away. And so the first thing they come down, like, what happened, man? That dude was coming right in. He was about 50 yards. I said, my mother-in-law had called me checking on my wife because my wife was freaking to have, we were expecting my first son uh -huh. and my wife was an answer her phone. So my mother-in-law thought, well, maybe, you know, uh, she was in labor. So I missed a, a really good, uh, uh, opportunity, but I always remember that because look at my son. I think about it. he was a beautiful white tail coming right in. Oh, man, that's <laughs> that's but hard. I do still have. I, I will have a. I do have a Laguna a Laguna deer uh, that I've uh, that I've harvested. That uh, again, uh, probably another uh, high one forties uh, ten point that I really really uh, super proud of. Yeah, I mean that's every that should be everyone's goal because they're out there. There's big big buck out there. Mm -hmm. Looking to harvest. There you go. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> yeah, that's a good, nice looking. It's perfect. Oh, yeah. Almost, almost, almost. Oh, there's quality out there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's proof of it. Man, this uh, this has been awesome. I think those are the last couple of questions that we had, but, I mean, it's super insightful, especially for me. I know that uh, since I started working with Georgie, um, he's kind of, uh, knows the type of outdoor experience that I have. And I've been primarily a fisherman and, uh, invested in a boat and we do a lot of fishing in the Laguna Madre and, and things of that nature. And we've done some hunting and, and done some waterfowl and some bird, uh, some white wing. Um, but he's actually encouraged me to get out there and start getting used, uh, you know, introduced to archery and, and finally get, get uh, some rifle hunting down. So this particular week, we've actually scheduled something at a, at a, at a lease um, uh, where we're going to try and uh, take down a, a feral hog and hopefully get me on a mammal there. And, but, but I mean, I, I, the, the information you've provided, I'm, I'm super excited. I think Georgie's kind of invited me also to get in on his group to try and get in on one of those draw hunts and, and I'm all for it. Hopefully, you know, um, it, it'll be like winning the lottery if we get drawn and then, to get out there and, and harvest ourselves an animal in one of those uh, uh, units that you guys have. It's a great experience. Um, and like I said, it kind of draws you in with its challenge. If, if you're the type of person that, that accepts a challenge and, and doesn't back down from one, that's kind of what hooks you in to keep coming back to Laguna because it's, it's a beautiful place. You kind of get lost in the beauty of it, get yeah. lost in, in being able to hike and walk around in the areas that normally aren't open. Uh, to the to the hiking and, and 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 you can actually get your get your boots on the ground and 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 challenge yourself against mother nature i think personally that's what brings me into hunt. that that's why i love the laguna hunt so much just because it, it there's something that feels so primitive about it i mean it is. last hunt that i that i was successful i, I harvested a doe that day i had walked uh, 14 miles and just yeah. walking phone looking for something anything to get a track on yeah. and uh I'm, man i'm more proud of that doe than i am a couple of the bucks that i have hanging in my living room to be honest with you you'd be, you'd be surprised how proud of you are of just a harvest and, and most of the hunters that come out at laguna 
they're just very proud of their harvest because it's a challenging hunt. But there is quality out there. There are some. Oh, nice there. Well, hopefully this year we'll get drawn and be successful. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm hoping too. I, I went on a seven-year dry spell. Oh. <laughs> Being drawn. Well, maybe this uh, doing this video was probably the good thing to break the luck. Now you. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> all righty. Well, Sarge, thank you so much. Those of you at home, I hope you all. Uh, can really retain some of the information, especially a lot of the tips. Uh, they're great tips out there, guys. Go ahead and make sure to get your applications in. It's already available for you on tpwd.texas.gov. Alrighty, guys, that's it. I'll see y'all later. Thank you.